Hey guys, hi. Uh, welcome to this mock series uh, by TPF. This is Dinesh. Uh, I uh, am a product manager and I lead the merchant and growth products currently at uh, Lazy Pay brand, which is part of PayU. Uh, before this, I was working with Make My Trip on the growth, retention, and the customer experience problems for around four and a half years. So, uh, as uh, I kind of uh, worked as a software engineer before and then have a total work experience of around eight, eight years right now. I'll give it over to JD, who will be the interviewee today, and then she can quickly introduce herself. Uh, hi, Tinesh. Uh, so, hi, everyone. I am JD. I am working as a PM at yellow.ai. Uh, I currently work in the document cognition product line. So, that is basically smart search uh, uh, domain. So, basically, uh, into search. Uh, earlier, I was working as a software engineer at Dell, so I made that transition from an engineer to a product recently. So uh, excited for this. Thanks for having me, Dinesh. Great. Uh, so quickly, we'll set the context uh, in terms of the case study, right? So this is a, a case study round, which I had prepared a case study and gave it to Jaydeep. I'll quickly share that across and I'll give you an overall context. So the company that we have in mind for today is booking.com and the main objective is to understand. So there is a, there is a set of user research observations and quantitative data that was presented to JD. And the idea was to come up with a overall long-term vision uh, where we, we try to understand if booking.com has to foray uh, into apartments or not, or like, do they need to grow big in apartment sector versus hotel sector? And also, as a short-term objective, we also need to come up with two uh, features or products which, uh, which the team can pick up for two sprints. And then uh, the overall idea is to understand like how do we uh, understand the problem statements from there, uh, understand like what are the features that can be developed, and then understand what are the success metrics that uh, probably can be looked at for these features. So to quickly look at, uh, there are these user observations, which again, you can go through in the uh, in the presentation later on and also there is a quantitative data which talks about like what is the current uh, visitors bound state and conversion of different platforms similarly a comparison between hotels and apartments as of today on booking.com so jd has prepared the uh, case study and we'll kind of go through that now thank you over to you jd uh, thanks, Dinesh. Uh, so I'll just present my uh, assignment or solution that I have made for this um, problem statement. Uh, so uh, the problem statement given to me was that uh, booking.com is basically a place uh, where most of the folks come around for hotel room bookings but uh, apartments is also uh, um, uh, apartments is also a very hot uh, option which is uh, coming up so uh, we want to uh, basically look at the segment of users uh, you know who uh, come to this platform for apartment booking what are their pain points uh, uh, why do they? Uh, why are they not comfortable enough uh, with this uh, segment? And uh, how can we uh, convert those users? Uh, so uh, these are some uh, stats which were a part of the case study, which I have used uh, uh, later on in my assignment for um, making some assumptions. Um, uh, and uh, this is uh, so. Uh, so uh, coming to the structure of this assignment, how I have structured it is that uh, so uh, I'll just basically uh, I'll just basically talk about the problem statement, uh, the assumptions that I have made, uh, my user personas, what is the current user flow, uh, then some features that I have come up with, uh, then a, a basic sprint planning for two weeks and the long term plan. And uh, uh, as I talk about the solutions, I have also presented all the um, uh, aspects of it, uh, the wireframes, metrics, uh, all the insights, etc. Uh, so, uh, are we good, uh, Dinesh? Uh, shall yeah, I sure. Please. Please go ahead. 
Uh, so, uh, uh, since uh, we know the problem statement uh, that we want to uh, uh, we want to see that you know how can we cater to the um, growing a uh, segment of the people who want to come to this platform for apartment booking. Uh, so, uh, uh, so yeah, uh, our basic goal would be to improve the bounce rate uh, uh, that we are observing, and the channel that I have chosen is mobile web platform. Uh, quickly coming to the assumptions. Uh, so as per the presented data, uh, the, uh, pl the platforms that we have are web, uh, 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 mobile web, mobile apps and desktop. And uh, the number of visitors uh, coming to the mo uh, mobile platform are uh, 200K, coming to mobile web are 500K and coming to the desktop are 100K and the bounce rate uh, for each of those respectively and the conversion. Um, so uh, 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 how I thought about it is that if the number of people coming to the platform uh, are 200K and the bounce rate is 40%, which is 80,000 uh, people leaving the platform uh, when they're trying to navigate through the apartment booking and all, and the uh, conversion rate for the people coming to the platform uh, for apartment booking um, are, uh, uh, is uh, 10,000 only. So uh, the ratio of the number of people uh, coming to the platform versus the ratio of uh, people leaving the platform is 20 to 8. That is out of every 20 people, 8 people are leaving the platform when they want to do an apartment booking. And this, uh, this ratio is uh, uh, worse when we compare to every other channel. So this is the reason that I choose web, a mobile web as a channel uh, where I would like to, you know, work, um, uh, work towards improving this ratio. Uh, let's have uh, a little understanding over here, right? Yeah. So uh, when you look at the data, uh, this is not specifically towards apartments, right? This is a mix of apartments and hotels overall. And also the ratio that you're looking at, which is 20 is to 8, that is nothing but the bounce rate that is already given, right? So you look yeah. at mobile web's bounce rate, which is 40%. So that is nothing but 8 by 20, right? So similarly, yeah. for mobile apps, which is 15%, which is 3 by 20 and all. So uh, is there any particular reason why you are choosing, uh, uh, say, mobile web uh, over mobile apps or desktop over here? Like, uh, Yeah. So... Um... Uh, so uh, the reason why I'm choosing mobile web uh, here is because uh, uh, so the, the number of daily visitors uh, who are coming to mobile web are 200,000, right? And uh, from uh, 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 and out of that user segment, the maximum bounce rate uh, is uh, there for this uh, segment. So um, uh, most of the people are uh, kind of dissatisfied with the mobile web experience it looks like and it is difficult uh, for them maybe to uh, you know uh, uh, understand how the apartment booking is happening or maybe whatever their pain points are uh, so uh, 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 keeping in mind uh, that assumption i have chosen this uh, platform also uh, 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 the visitors are kind of um, uh, average or a median medium uh, median between 100k and 500k so if uh, i want to go and target a segment and i want to go and you know experiment maybe with my features so this is a safe uh, segment uh, where I can, uh, you know, look at uh, any kind of improvements. 100K would be a little low and 500K would be a little more um, uh, in terms of experimenting or launching new features uh, to gain the traction to see, you know, where are we heading. So this is a safe uh, segment which we can go ahead with. But, uh, don't you think the other way? Where like, uh, say... Uh, if you look at mobile apps, right, uh, there is a visitor count of around 500k. Similarly, the conversion is also somewhere in between, between desktop and mobile web. And also the bounce rate is the lowest amongst all three, right? So yeah. shouldn't you kind of pick up this channel uh, over anything else? Uh, especially because you can always uh, choose to experiment only as particular set of traffic, right? You do not need to, you know, you do not need to expose your experiment to all the users. So yeah. uh, wouldn't this, like still the question goes back to is bounce rate the correct metric here or uh, is there a different metric say like conversion being the correct metric or say okay. any other thing being the correct metric, yeah. 
yeah okay got it got your point yeah uh, so uh, uh, that uh, you are uh, right there that uh, you know uh, uh, if i want to experiment then i have a huge user base already in the mobile app segment but uh, 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 looking at the conversion and bounce rate uh, people are already uh, happy enough with the mobile app experience so uh, i want to target uh, people where uh, the bounce rate is also maximum and the conversion rate is minimum uh, so uh, 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 looking at this data, the people who are coming to mobile web uh, platform for apartment booking or for any booking at booking.com are uh, uh, facing issues, right, or are um, uh, uh, unsatisfied with this experience. So uh, that makes, uh, so that is a major reason I want to choose mobile web as, uh, as a platform uh, and see if we can, with, uh, with the changes uh, that I, I'm going to bring in, are we able to convert more people and, uh, and are we able to lower the bounce rate? Got it. And uh, okay. So let's park this discussion for now. Let's say that since you kind of have taken this assumption that you would want to improve bounce rate uh, for the further set of uh, assumptions, let's take it and then uh, we'll kind of again circle back in the end. Okay. Sounds good. Sure. Uh, so uh, looking at the personas uh, who would like to uh, come to the platform for apartment booking, uh, the first persona is the family. Uh, the family guy or the family. So uh, they basically want to uh, look at apartment booking for, uh, for you know, a, a stay maybe long or short, but mostly with the family. Uh, and their motivation is that uh, they want privacy, they want feel at home uh, vibe, and they want also to be able to cook in their private kitchen as and when they want. Uh, the major pain points uh, coming uh, uh, coming from this segment for apartment booking is that uh, they basically uh, are not you know very happy with uh, the whole onboarding or the check uh, or uh, the whole onboarding experience so uh, when uh, they uh, look at the apartment booking so uh, they don't really know that you know whom should they contact because when you are booking a hotel you already know that there will be a reception there will be somebody you can go and you can ask for your uh, keys your room etc but how is that experience taken care when we are talking about the apartment booking is something that uh, uh, is a point of concern for this segment of users uh, then coming on to the next uh, segment which is a a staycation guy so basically the this is a persona who's looking at an apartment for a long stay uh, uh which is a kind of a trend nowadays that people uh go for staycations you know and uh, they just want to stay for a longer duration of time um the motivation for this segment is uh again privacy feel at home ability to cook in a private kitchen a good wi-fi and a view uh, so a view is something that really, uh, uh, you know, uh, is a major uh, point of uh, motivation for this segment. Uh, and the major pain point is that if I am planning a long stay uh, at any place, I would want to know that, you know, is it's a kitchen equipped or what are the uh, uh, facilities that I'm, uh, I'm getting? Uh, how is a view? Um, what kind of, uh, what kind of, uh, you know, apartment am I looking at? Or uh, uh, is it, uh, are all the amenities enough for me to uh, stay for a very long duration? So these are the major concerns which, uh, uh, which uh, you know, might, uh, 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 so which, uh, you know, might be a major roadblock for this kind of a segment to uh, go, with, go ahead with the apartment booking at booking.com. Then the third uh, user segment is a solo traveler. Uh, what uh, we observe is that uh, most of the bookings uh, or the entire bookings that are happening uh, at the platform for apartments is that you have to book the entire apartment. But if somebody is uh, coming to uh, stay, you know, as a solo traveler and cannot afford the entire apartment, but still wants an apartment kind of an experience, he uh, cannot, you know, book one single room out of the entire apartment. So this is something which uh, is uh, which we are uh, not at all uh, looking at uh, from point of view of a solo traveler. We are only offering um, the entire apartment uh, to be booked. So uh, because of, because of the affordability uh, reasons, etc., this segment of user might not be able to uh, go ahead with the apartment booking. 
Got it. So few questions over here. So first of all, uh, when you say the staycation guy, is it again a solo traveler or is it like a group of travelers together? Uh, so a staycation a guy could be a, a solo as well as a, a, in a group. But uh, I have uh, put this into a different segment is because these uh, this kind of pe- uh, persona is looking for a long term stay. So uh, uh, so uh, looking at that, the duration of the stay. I have uh, segmented uh, these personas into different uh, categories. Got it. And also, so in terms of the three three user personas that you came up with, right? Uh, which is the primary target persona that you might have? Uh, my target persona would be the family. Uh, of uh, uh, but uh, uh, my uh, the family would be the major. Uh, persona uh, that I would uh, like to focus on but uh, uh, also I have a thought of some features for other segments that could uh, uh, also be relevant to other segments as well but uh, the major primary focus would be for the family. Got it and uh, why do you think that is the reason? Uh, so uh, when uh, looking at a family, the major uh, concern is that uh, they basically want uh, a comfort. They want uh, uh, proper amenities, for example, kitchen, etc., which is why they would want to come to an apartment for a uh, home, uh, feel at home kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, feel or anything. So, uh, so I think comfort is a major concern for the family. And uh, if we solve these pain points, the onboarding experience, the comfort, or making sure that you know we have a good amount of uh, 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 information to uh, you know convey that okay we have these amenities or this is a way you can plan your stay. So I think that could also cover uh, pain points for the staycation guy uh, and somewhat for the solo travel. Uh, but since a major concern for a solo traveler is to be able to book a room inside an apartment, so that is uh, something that we have to look at uh, uh, separately. But uh, if we uh, focus on the other aspects, we can actually uh, cater to family and staycation guys' pain points uh, quite uh, easily. Got it. Let's move forward. So uh, this is a current user flow uh, that we see inside uh, the application. Uh, The user uh, enters a location date and the number of people, Uh, then uh, he searches, and then he has to specifically set the filter as uh, apartment. So uh, uh, currently uh, the user will see the list of entire uh, you know, uh, bookings which are available. Uh, but if he specifically wants to look at the apartment uh, category, he has to set that filter. So this is like a two clicks away uh, thing. Then he, ha- then he clicks on the listing. Uh, so when as soon as he clicks on the listing, he doesn't find uh, the host details. He doesn't see that who is hosting the apartment. And there is no, uh, fee- uh, there is no option to... Um, check what all amenities are there there is no option to uh, share an apartment with other travelers or to navigate rooms Uh, so these are the major pain points which are responsible for the bounce and user exits the app so uh, these are the major reasons which are causing the bounce to happen uh, for the users in, uh, in this user flow so bounce you're specifically talking about this particular listing page right uh yeah the so particular general, listing page. The, the way a bounce is calculated is probably on the, uh, say, the f- search results page or even the page before that, right? So whichever page the user lands on first is the primary page from which they, bo- they can bounce off. All other pages will be mostly called a stepwise conversion or drop off from those pages. Bounce is different from, uh, uh, say, drop offs and all. Yeah, but then, yeah, got like, yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, yeah, so I think uh, 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 um, uh, the idea that I want to uh, convey is basically the drop off itself that uh, the user, uh, as soon as the user clicks on the listing, because of these major uh, points or pain points, he would be uh, uh, dropping off from the uh, application. Got it. So uh, somewhere I am understanding that whatever you are putting them as problems here, right? are trying to be solutions over here. So can I understand what are the hypotheses that you have behind these things? Like what are 
So what are the hypotheses on which you are building these, say, uh, features or solutions? Like, why do you think the host, host contact details are even important? Why do you think these affinities are even important? Like, what is the hypothesis behind? Got it. Got it. it. Uh, so, uh, when, uh, like I uh, said while discussing the personas, uh, when you come to uh, and uh, when you come to a booking, uh, uh, we are uh, we are used to booking uh, hotel rooms or hotel stays. So we never bother about uh, such things. That how will the onboarding be? Uh, from where will I get my keys? from where, uh, so how will I get to the room, et cetera. But uh, when you think of an apartment, uh, there is no uh, reception desk. Uh, there is, uh, there is no, uh, there, this is no, uh, there is no uh, formal uh, onboarding that is happening for you. Or uh, you, you don't know that, you know, how this is going to be, who will hand over the keys to you? How will you uh, navigate to your room, to your apartment? So that is something uh, which is, um, uh, you know, very different when we come to, when we talk about an apartment uh, experience uh, overall from a hotel booking. So uh, that is a major uh, point of concern for the people who want to book an apartment and who are already used to a hotel booking kind of experience. Got it. Let's... Uh, uh, Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, also the hypothesis uh, behind the other uh, two uh, 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 these points. Uh, if if somebody is planning a stay, uh, right, uh, they would want to know because it's an apartment. In hotel, you usually know that okay, uh, your uh, 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 there will be a daily uh, you know uh, cleaning happening, housekeeping will be there, or this is how you can contact the hotel uh, desk. Uh, and uh, they'll take care of everything. But those kind of things are uh, uh, might not be there for an apartment because this is an apartment, not a hotel. So uh, if uh, somebody wants to come to an apartment, they would want to be sure that what are the amenities which will be there. And uh, if there is something which is not available, uh, they would want to carry it with themselves uh, if they're uh, you know living uh, planning for a longer stay. And uh, uh, sim, uh, and uh, the uh, again the problem uh, the hypothesis behind the uh, sh uh, share the apartment is that if I am a solo traveler and I cannot afford the entire apartment, uh, so uh, is there an option or is there uh, uh, something you know that uh, that uh, uh, is there a way for me to go ahead and book one room out of the entire apartment? Got it. Cool. Let's look at uh, what you have proposed and then we yeah, can yeah. more on this. Um, so uh, the feature number one that I have uh, thought of is add the host details below the listing. Uh, so this is a hypothesis again uh, that I have uh, uh, mentioned here. So I have actually uh, given the entire background that why this is a problem and how this will help. All right. Uh, so uh, the proposition uh, that this uh, feature would bring would be a goodwill among the users and increased number of apartment bookings. Uh, the metrics that we can use to track the success, uh, uh, again, uh, bounce rate, I think, which is not a right metric here, as we've discussed, it should be the drop rate, right? The dropping rate should uh, decrease. Then the click through rate. Uh, so uh, there is a button basically that I would be adding to contact the host. So the click through rate for that button and the number of apartment bookings per month. Uh, also the possible uh, pitfalls for this uh, scenario could be uh, the host availability. It might happen that the user is trying to contact the host and the host is not available or he is not responding back. So that could actually lead to frustration and maybe a bad user experience. Then the second possible pitfall that I could think of was that host details need to be ver verified. So if somebody uh, changes their contact information, uh, the booking.com team has to be responsible for uh, uh, verifying or uh, uh, updating that contact. Got it. Let's uh, look at the flow once. I have some questions over here. I'll come back yeah, to that. Yeah. Uh, so this is a current uh, flow where uh, in the entire uh, mobile screen, there is no option uh, for a user to uh, know that, you know, who is hosting this apartment, how to contact that uh, person or how is it going to be? So there is no uh, information. 
but uh, uh, whoever is hosting it or whoever is responsible for handing over the keys to me so i can uh, 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 so i'm proposing that uh, we can actually do uh, some something like this we can have this host uh, details and an option for a user to contact that host okay so uh, two questions over here one is what is the forward flow that you are thinking when the user clicks on contact host will there be like all the all the contact details of the host will be revealed to the user or not second also why do you think the clicking on this cta is super important so if you looked at uh, the previous slide right you said yeah. the click through rate of contact host as a cta is important for you to track success yeah uh, like why do you think this uh, the user should click on this for your uh, success got it so uh, uh, coming to the first uh, question uh, as soon as a user clicks on contact host uh, uh, revealing the contact information is not a good idea so uh, uh, so how it is going to be that uh, the contact host will be linked to a whatsapp uh, a deep link or maybe uh, uh, so uh, there could be different options a mail uh, or a uh, whatsapp uh, or a, a sim simple call id so a user could have an uh, have an option to connect with the host uh, uh, over an email over a uh, text or chat or over uh, a call uh, because it is not uh, i think a safe uh, uh, to um, you know reveal the pii uh, which is a protected information or sensitive data uh, this way uh so uh, from a uh, from a security as well as a, a user experience perspective that would be uh, the way uh, i am planning the contact host uh, flow okay uh, and yeah uh, and uh, the second uh, right so uh, the main uh, problem uh, that we saw the major pain point that we saw was that uh, there was no way to contact a host and which is why we brought this feature that the user can contact a host and then uh, you know not uh, cancel the booking or maybe not drop off so uh, maybe uh, you know before uh, making that apartment booking they would want to uh, click on this uh, button they would want to contact a host uh, and maybe they would want to understand that you know how uh, this will be or they would want to clarify their queries and then they would uh, like to uh, go ahead with the apartment booking so uh, if uh, the click rate for the contact host uh, but button uh, is uh, more right or if i can see that you know people are making use of this feature and this is uh, then increasing the uh, apartment bookings then i would be able to track that okay this feature is being used or this feature is useful in some way but uh, if i don't track uh, you know the uh, people coming to this uh, button and clicking it then uh, i would not uh, there is no way for me to understand that how this feature is doing or are, are people even using this or not okay so also in terms of what you propose right say if a user is contacting host uh, it goes into an asynchronous manner right like a user can be contacted over, over email they suppose so yeah. the user has to contact the host over email and wait for the response of the uh, host right so don't you think this will hit you in terms of the conversion because uh, yeah. uh, in the same in the same session the user will not be able to finish the booking right uh yeah Uh, but uh, uh, so that uh, that is uh, one possible uh, thing that could happen. So uh, to resolve that, uh, uh, we could actually there could be some FAQs, right? Uh, that uh, frequently asked questions that users might have, uh, which is uh, related to the onboarding. uh then how will uh, uh, how will they be handed the over the keys and all so we could actually uh, uh, answer those questions uh, here itself uh, so there could be a separate section where we uh, you know uh, uh, basically take care of all those uh, common questions that they might have uh, and uh, 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 so that you know they are able to close that booking in the same uh, uh, flow because we cannot afford uh, uh, people switching of uh, to a different screen altogether and that might actually hit our conversion um and uh, obviously nobody would be waiting for a host to get back to them and then they would you know wait for that duration so i think uh, uh, we could have that faq kind of a thing for 
uh, answering those uh, queries uh, and also making sure that uh, you know they are uh, happy with this experience and they they can trust it that yeah they will be somebody to help them with their onboarding got it cool let's move to the next one uh, the next uh, uh, feature that I have thought of is to redesign the amenities page. Uh, so looking at the user research, uh, so the major concern the people face is that they want to know exactly that what are the utilities in one category. Uh, they want to know that what is the specific utilities that I would be getting for a uh, bathroom, then for kitchen, uh, etc. So uh, in the current flow, we don't have that. Uh, we 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 are not uh, you know uh, uh, telling them specifically that uh, under each category what is a different uh, set of things that they can see so uh, because of this it uh, it you know causes them um, a kind of uh, uh, it, it's basically a rough experience for them and they just cannot you know plan a long term stay uh, easily or that could uh, impact the entire user experience uh, uh, so the uh, metric that I would be using to track this would be um, uh, the, again, a bounce rate, which is not a right metric here. It should be uh, the drop, which is the drop in the users um, uh, coming for, uh, for uh, apartment booking, then a number of apartment bookings per month and average time spent per user on the listing. So uh, currently, if they want to, um, so why I thought of this metric is that if they come to this uh, uh, listing and uh, they, you know, uh, spend some time uh, and uh, over this and they're reading it actually that, you know, what are the amenities under each category? So uh, that time should increase uh, if, uh, and if that time is increasing, that means that the people are actually, you know, uh, uh, reading it and it, it is, uh, that information is also easy for them to see it is easy for them to uh, navigate to research uh, okay that these are the different uh, things that are there and then they can uh, go ahead and uh, do the booking uh, so uh, uh, so uh, this is a, a, a metric that I thought of. The possible pitfalls could, here could be that the user might feel that it is really cluttered and there is a lot of information so that could actually uh, lead to user frustration got it and again uh, isn't this counterintuitive that say like uh, average time spent per user on the listing should increase? So suppose this can happen for two reasons, right? The user actually has a need where he wants to look at much more information to make a decision. Uh, second, like the information is so disorganized on the page that he is not able to find it or he or she is not able to find it, right? So yeah. how do you understand? Like, would you look at something before this? Like say, is there uh, is there a primary metric that you look at before saying uh, what is the is there a correlation between time spent on the uh, listing versus the conversion rate uh, is there some hypothesis that like that which you would be checking uh, yeah uh, got it so uh, 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 I'll just uh, uh, try to show you what is a current flow so uh, mm -hmm. as per the current flow uh, the user uh, has to click on all facilities and he lands to this page right mm -hmm. uh, so uh, this uh, page itself uh, the way we are portraying the information uh, so uh, it is not uh, actually uh, clear for a user to uh, understand or this information is not presented in a way that you know a user could understand that uh, what are the different things that i have under each category um, so, uh, uh, so if the information is, you know, a too a cluttered, or maybe this is leading to a bad user experience, um, uh, the user might actually, uh, uh, you know, skip from uh, this page. Uh, rather than uh, going ahead with the apartment booking, right? Uh, so uh, so uh, uh, the feature uh, or the change that I am introducing is this, but uh, because of this, it might happen that yeah, user is spending some time to see that, okay, um, this is, uh, uh, he's trying to do some research, he's trying to see, uh, and also that might happen that uh, it, he's not able to find the right information. So that is leading uh, the user to spend more time here. Um, so uh, how can we differentiate between these two uh, things um, uh, is, uh, so if the user completes the flow, 
uh so after coming to a uh, facilities and uh, spending some time here he is able to close that flow he is able to close the booking then we uh, they, uh we can kind of know that uh, this is um, not an issue but if after spending a lot of time here on this page uh, the user is dropping off then we would know that uh, the information is not presented in a way the user is able to understand and uh, close the booking so uh, that would actually help us uh, know that uh, you know if uh, it is counterintuitive or it is not got it okay cool uh and uh, coming to the third uh, feature that i have thought of uh, which is a, a shared apartment uh, feature uh, this is this would be catering to the third persona uh so as per the uh, current design we don't have any such uh, ability for a user to <clears throat> come and book one room uh, in an um, uh, apartment so uh, currently the user has to come and uh, uh, you know book the entire apartment to himself so this is not very friendly with a solo traveler persona um, uh, so uh, the proposition that uh, would that this feature would uh, be giving would be the increased number of book bookings and we would be targeting a new segment altogether so that would uh, increase our business or revenue um the metrics that i would be uh, using to track the success would be the number of shared bookings and a number of apartment bookings overall per month uh, the pitfalls could be that a user might not have a choice in choosing the kind of uh, flatmate or roommate they want so uh, this is something that user has no control over and this could actually be a, a a bad user experience for them uh, but uh, uh, to exactly understand right so where uh, so uh, why do you think this is one of the strongest uh, problem uh, problem or say pain points at, at this point of time uh this is because uh, uh, P, uh so uh, uh, why i have thought of this is uh, because looking at the other segment which is a family or group travels so uh, the frequency with which the, uh, those kind of people travel is very low as compared to the solo travelers so solo travelers are some uh, are uh, is a persona that uh, uh, travels very frequently um so if you uh, if uh, uh, i look at the um, uh, maybe uh, if i have to approximate say if there is a family or there is a group of friends right they would be planning a stay uh, say uh, once once per two or three months uh, which is at max or uh, a once in six months so that is the uh, you know uh, frequency with which family travelers or uh, group travelers book a stay but uh, solo travelers are uh, kind of you know they would uh, 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 maybe book a stay every month or uh, once per two months i mean the frequency is really high for this set of users so um, so i think targeting this set of users and targeting this pain point would actually uh, you know help us in um, uh, uh, improving the number of uh, bookings that we are taking for apartments and also our revenue got it cool let's move ahead uh, so uh, this is a flow uh, that i have thought of uh, what we can see uh, as of now is that all the apartments are already uh, uh, you know showcasing in the carousel as entire apartment so instead of entire apartment we can have shared apartment uh, and uh, in the shared apartment uh, the user can see the rooms and uh, suppose it's a two room apartment uh, so the user would uh, actually be able to see that okay this is my room one and what is the view it is a master bedroom with this is a price and you can check out the pictures and uh, similarly for uh, the other room and uh, then he can go uh, and then that flow would be the same which we have as of now uh, 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 going ahead and booking and the final billing page got it so also uh are there any demerits that you can think of by by doing something of this sort uh yeah uh, so uh, the demerit uh, uh, that i could think of uh, is that uh, this flow maybe could uh, you know uh, uh, i mean uh, since this is like a two click away uh, thing 
right uh, currently because we are uh, showing the details for each room so this is something which we are not doing for the regular uh, booking when we are uh, offering uh, a user to book the entire apartment uh, or uh, so yeah that could be one thing and also um, uh, so uh, there could be some apartments which are not open for share sharing right uh, only certain uh, uh, hosts maybe or only certain uh, owners would be uh, open to a shared apartment kind of listing right so uh, in that scenario uh, uh, it uh, actually comes on to the host that if they want to give up, give their apartment for sharing or not and also if there is some family or a group who is interested in this department uh, in this apartment uh, uh, and uh, they might not be able to you know find it um, kind of very friendly for them because again this is like a shared apartment and they might you know not uh, Go, uh, come over this and check it out even though they might like it so uh, that is something that we have to think of maybe if there is a way that we can you know come to an intersection between uh, the already existing persona and this new persona got it cool let's move ahead uh, this is a sprint planning that i've thought of uh, so there are two sprints uh, that we have and we have two developers and a designer so the tasks that i am uh, taking for the first sprint would be to um, design uh, the first feature flow uh, finalizing the design then uh, i i'm breaking that into two uh, sub tasks or sub uh, 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 or you can say into two stories that uh, epic into two stories which one would be to add the host description and the other would be to add a contact host button uh since we have two developers uh, so uh, we can actually uh, have one developer uh, completely work on this um and uh, then uh, the second uh, uh, feature that we can also take up in the sprint would be the redesign uh, so why i am uh, considering two features for the sprint is because uh, uh, the uh, so adding the host description uh, uh, is not uh, that difficult or not that bigger task the major uh, implementation uh, would go into the uh, contact host button so uh, one developer would be solely working on that for one sprint which is like 10 working days and um, yeah, the second feature uh, that we have is a design a redesign right in that we are not actually adding any new uh, flow or uh, adding any uh, new uh, uh, implementation it is just that we are reorganizing the data so i think that would uh, that should not be very um, intensive on the dev effort and since we have two developers and one sprint we can cover these two features in a sprint okay uh, uh, and yeah yeah go ahead uh, finish on the second sprint as well yeah. and then i'll have yeah and uh, uh, and coming to the second sprint uh, i am uh, uh, taking the uh, third feature which is uh, uh, which is a shared room apartment for this second sprint and uh, 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 then of course we have two developers and uh, 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 one sprint itself so i think this is like a, a bigger um, feature because we are doing it from the scratch so that would need more effort so that is why i am dedicating one entire sprint for this feature got it so let's take the task that you are there in sprint one right first of all whenever you are defining any tasks on the sprint or let's say feature as a whole uh uh is is that success metric very clear here like what is that you want to uh measure or succeed on uh, when this yeah. feature goes live yeah uh, uh, yeah so uh, i think uh, that is something that i missed out here uh, while sprint planning uh, the goal of the sprint has to be very clear that uh, what are we trying to achieve in the sprint or what is the goal that we are looking at so uh, uh so the goal that uh, i would be looking at my first sprint uh, uh would be to uh, the not star metric maybe so um that would be to uh, increase the number of apartment bookings that would be the uh, first not star metric uh, uh that i would be thinking overall for both of these uh, uh features that i'm uh, you know thinking of adding in the sprint planning and uh, uh, then coming to the feature wise uh, metrics uh, that we already have discussed i think 
um, correct but then so don't you see some uh, disjoint here you said the major metric that you are looking at improving is bounce rate right over here you are saying uh, the total number of bookings is the key thing which is mostly a conversion problem yeah. not a bounce rate problem yes so uh, i think there is some misalignment over yeah there, right? yeah yeah actually so uh, so uh, after our discussion i think i uh, i come to the i've come to this conclusion that uh, bounce rate is not a, a right metric to think of here because bounce rate is something uh, that uh, you know uh, what a bounce rate is it if user comes to a page and uh, maybe he doesn't like something then he completely exist exits from that page uh and uh, that that usually happens uh, you know when uh, uh, when user is entering the flow but once he's already into the flow uh, for example he's already into the landing page and then if uh, he finds something which is not uh, good enough and then exits that flow then it would more be a conversion problem it yeah, would sure. more be that we want to convert those users who have come so far uh, so uh, so yeah okay. i think i think uh, uh, i'll sorry to intervene Uh, but yeah. then also so i think it's clear right like what is that we are trying to optimize for yes yes now, yes now uh, in terms of c putting these two uh, tasks into say one sprint right uh, so you are saying there is add host add host description add contact host button these are the front end side of things right so you're talking about what has to go on the mobile app or on what has to go on the mobile web in terms of the design changes right but there will be a lot of back end changes also don't you think Yes, like yes, the... yes, yes, yes. So, uh, thinking of the uh, uh, ad host uh, description, right? Uh, so, this is uh, something that uh, we can handle in the front end itself. But uh, coming to the contact host 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 button itself, so this will be definitely be a complete end to end um, uh, uh, intensive dev effort, uh, which will of course uh, it take. Uh, a a lot of time and effort so but since we have one a uh, developer completely dedicated to this so in that uh, scenario i think that you know we can uh, take this up for one sprint uh, in uh, we can dedicate one complete sprint to this uh, achieving this uh, functionality now uh, i have my own doubts in terms of say maybe can one person take up the whole front end effort plus back end effort together but then uh, probably that's okay like the overall idea is something you understood right like what yeah. you want to do in a sprint how do you want to measure so that's fine let's move ahead okay uh then coming to the long term planning okay i think there is some issue i'm not able to navigate to this yeah so uh, the long term planning uh, so uh, in the long term uh, what i would like to do is i would like to uh, launch the feature first in a certain demography uh, so the demography that i am thinking of is india and southeast uh, demographies and uh, see the traction for uh, for these features and uh, on the overall north star metric which is uh, the conversion um uh, and uh, then uh, 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 prepare for a global launch based on uh, the response that i would be seeing for the launch uh, for uh, these demographies and then uh, track the metrics for at least 6 months after the launch to uh, actually kind of get a, a good idea on how the feature is performing uh and uh, the first channel that i'm uh, choosing is mobile web but uh, based on the performance and the traction i can take this to a desktop and a mobile app as well got it cool i think that is good maybe we can probably uh, spend a couple of minutes on the overall feedback right um so uh, firstly if you look at the case study maybe if you go back right so the first thing that we should Uh, uh maybe then i'll cover the highlights first like what has gone good right before uh, covering what could have probably improved so in terms of uh, what has gone good i think uh, you had clearly defined uh, what are the user personas that you would want to target or like what are the user personas who would like to uh, kind of book an apartment and then what are the from uh, main motivations looking into the pain points a little more and then coming into uh, uh, thinking of it from a user flow angle right not directly jumping into it 
uh, followed by say like uh, each of the features that you came up with also like you had the insights you had what are the metrics that you would want to look at and what are the pitfalls uh, you had even covered the uh, say uh, wireframes so that is pretty good uh, this is what i would say has been really good uh, there are a couple of points which you could uh, possibly improve as well uh, one of the main point is understanding which metric to improve right i think there is that is something we both agreed upon that should yeah. be conversion rate uh, secondly uh, so again if you look at the case it is not clearly defined if we want to uh, go behind apartments as a, a apartments as a uh, say overall objective or not right so we need to establish that first like which is ha there is a scope for apartments right so you did not use the second set of qual quantitative data at all like what is the average com what is the average commission what is the growth rate uh, what is the nps for each of them and all right so you have to first establish what uh, is there a scope for the apartments market followed by what are the uh, what are the major things that you could do uh, if you want to cater to apartments right so there should be these categories of uh, items say like you can probably start with the pain points then you can say these are the categories of uh, problems that i would want to solve on and then uh, uh, once you establish what is the long term vision right uh, then you have to come probably into the short term saying ha huh, i have picked these two categories and then these are the two problems or three problems i would want to focus on so that is something that uh, would have been a little better i think on the long term strategy also uh, what i would say is Uh, the current long term strategy that you proposed can be improved a lot it's a little vague vague or general uh, in fashion but uh, that is it so overall just to summarize i think uh, in terms of how you approach the problem the structure that you brought to it uh, and then say via framing uh, looking at the motivation and all has been really good uh, there are some problem areas or say uh, areas where you can improve like we said uh, which is mostly on the long term thinking Uh, a hypothesis based one as well as like which metric to exactly uh, say track and all right so these should probably uh, be good yeah that's it jaydeep thanks thanks for thanks the for the feedback uh, dinesh that was a really detailed feedback i think that would really help me in improving my uh, structure and thinking more thank you great thank you thank you uh, so much i nothing more na yeah no, yeah we are done we stop recording sure um i would just want 30 30 second bits from both of you where you could talk about your experience in this interview that would be great and like my experience was so really nice i think exactly. i exactly. <laughs> uh, so if you could talk about your experience of doing this interview and what you think would be one take away of that person who watches this interview would be both you and dinesh either of you yeah, sure. go first Ajitip, you can go first. I'll follow that. Uh, should I start? Yeah. Uh, so I really enjoyed this interview. I think uh, there are a lot of uh, product interviews that uh, kind of help uh, aspirants, but uh, there is nothing that covers uh, the case study rounds. Uh, case study rounds are uh, something which are across uh, covered in every product interview, uh, be it any for be it for any position. uh so this inter uh, with this interview i think users will uh, get a, a hang of it that you know how this case study rounds are uh, in general conducted um and uh, uh, i think uh, i really enjoyed this problem statement and the way um uh, uh, way the questions were asked i was uh, you know a kind of uh, uh, even uh, pushed to think beyond what i had all uh, thought Uh, while uh, you know solving the case study so i think um, dinesh really uh, did a good job as an interviewer and he really asked some really good uh, questions and he really gave gave a good feedback i think that would help me and others uh, improve on the understanding of metrics uh, what is bounce rate versus, versus conversion rate uh, and how can you you know apply those uh, understandings when you're solving a case study great uh this uh, thanks jyoti uh the session was pretty good like i think uh, from the time the i gave the case study uh, to the session in terms of how jyoti came up with the overall uh, structure of the problem how did she dice into uh, the problem statement coming up with the solutions i think uh, uh, it has been pretty good 
uh, this uh, she has uh, kind, uh, kind of developed things also on the go, which is on the fly. There is a lot of thought process that has been uh, done, which is again a very good job. Uh, like she mentioned, there is uh, there is a lack of resources for case study rounds, which is something which we wanted to do together. And then this should definitely help some of you guys who would be watching this thing. Thanks for this TPF. You're on mute. Thank you so much, Dinesh. Thank you so much, Jaydeep. I think this was very, very helpful. And it was a very, very insightful session. Um, I think uh, I think I think the case study definitely spoke about uh, spoke about a lot of scenarios that in general you know we would not even have thought about. Especially I till now have not seen anyone talk about how sprints are set up and all of that is done by a product manager. Till now and seeing that was something that was very interesting to me also. So and I think both of I think Jadeep you did a really good job in coming up with the case study. Thank you so much, Jati. Thank you so much, Dinesh. Thanks. For Thanks, Gorange, for Very arranging nice. this. Thanks, Thanks, Shakti. Thanks, Jati. Bye-bye. Thanks, Thanks Dinesh. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.